If we're going to uh, print a 16-bit integer, uh, it shouldn't require <coughs> more than five decimal digits. The largest base 10 number you can store in 16 bits is 32,767. Okay, so uh, we uh, might begin this way by blocking out five uh, places in memory to put things. Then I'm going to put a word of zeros after it. Now, really, the idea behind this thing is that we're going to build a character string. down in here, uh, one character at a time. And we're going to stash it. Conceptually, this is what we're doing. Down here someplace in memory is this place that we've called right now. Now we've got, uh, uh, this would be line out plus one, plus two, plus three, plus four, to get the five words that I've blocked out. Then this one down here, has zeros in it. Okay, now I put the address of line out into register 4. So in essence, register 4 is pointing right now to this memory location. By adding 4 onto it, I move that. So now it's down here. so far? Yep. Okay, now, uh, let's uh, load the register zero with our number x that we're trying to print out. Now, here I'm going to skip a lot of stuff and just say, Divide register 0 by 10. Probably in this case, repeated subtraction. <coughs> the easiest way to do that is going to put the quotient somewhere else in register 1 and leave the remainder in register zero. Okay, do you see what I'm saying? You get the number there, uh, you subtract 10 from it until you get a result down there that's less than 10. And you count how many times you subtract it. The number of times you subtract it is the quotient, and what's left over is the remainder. Zero. 
that's the ASCII coding. And then you store Zero, register four, offset zero. Let's work through a, a small number here and show you kind of what uh, what I'm thinking here. Suppose that X is uh, thirty-six. We won't attempt to do this in hex, we'll just uh, do it here. So you end up here, when I put the number in there I have this. Uh, I'll start with a zero in register one. <coughs> okay, I subtract ten and add one. Subtract ten and add one. Subtract 10, add 1. Okay, now I've got a, a, a remainder here less than 10. So I add this ASCII coding, 3, 0, uh, gives me a 3, 6, and I store that out where register 4 is. 36 was a bad choice. <laughs> Here, that's the number 36. Here, it's the ASCII code for the digit 6. <laughs> There's a difference. Okay, now I need to decrement register 4. So the register 4 now backs up. It's now looking at this location. Copy register 1 to register 0. Divide by 10, so we get a remainder. In this case, uh, it's just going to be a 3, so I won't actually end up dividing. I'll get a quotient of 0, but uh, then I get uh, down here. I add the 3, 0 to the 3 and store it. That goes now in here. Now I'm done, so I have to figure out what to do with these other three memory locations. Uh, you have some possibilities there of what you can do. You can fill them with uh, zero characters so they will print leading zeros. You can put in spaces so that it will just uh, print the spaces before the number, uh, whatever you want to do with it. Uh, the ASCII code for a space is uh, 40, uh, hex decimal 32 or hex 20. Now then, once you get that character string built, then uh, we'll go over some code here. Why I was going to leave that projector on, show you how to print out a character string that's zero terminated. Yeah. Is that a character or is that a number? That's Those are all characters. Those are all characters. So. But remember, characters are represented internally as numbers. So yeah, they're numbers. <laughs> okay. So this could be an A. So is this input in a string, or this is input in a 30, number 36? Okay, philosophy. <clears throat> when you sit at the keyboard and type in a number, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, it actually goes in as a character string. 
But what does that character string represent? Well, that's the purpose of the program, is to take that string and reinterpret it instead of a bunch of ASCII characters as a single 16-bit number. So when you say, is it a number or is it a string, uh, mm, mm. context again. <laughs> All depends on what you're doing with it. But if you, again, every time you press a, a, a key on that keyboard, it generates an ASCII code, whether you're pressing a letter or a number or a special character, doesn't matter. What you're getting out of it is an ASCII code. And everything that's done with that keystroke inside the program depends on what the program chooses to do with it. Okay, so the point of this routine as I have sketched it here is to take an internal 16-bit number and change that into a corresponding character string that would represent that same number. Okay, that's kind of the task that you have to get through, is to break that down into a corresponding character string. First of all, you have to separate it into its individual digits and then translate each of those digits into the corresponding ASCII code. Because, for example, if one of your digits is a 7, and you separate off that digit, and then you say, print this, you know what's going to happen? The computer's going to go, ding, because 7 happens to be the code to ring the bell. <laughs> okay? Um, so, you, you have to recognize the difference between the number and the corresponding ASCII code for the number. Yeah? Now you can't save, can you save two ASCII characters in a single memory location? No. You should be able to, well, <clears throat> okay, let me modify that No. Yes, you can, but if you try to print them both, you're going to have trouble. Okay, so on this system, just go ahead and use one memory location per character. Ultimately, if you go there and, and look at the sketch of the uh, uh, display status register and the display data register, the display data register is only 8 bits. But the LC3 doesn't have the capability of manipulating individual bytes. So you can't say move the low order byte out there and then move the high order bytes. You can't do that because you don't have instructions <coughs> to do it. So although you could store two ASCII characters per word, you don't really have the capability to work with them that way. So you just store one per word. Okay. until the quotient equals zero, and then, uh, as I indicated in here, fill in uh, the rest of uh, line out. With, uh, this, which is a, an ASCII space. And then once you get that character string, then we need to print it out. Well, let's see, I was going to post that uh, up there. Uh, since it's written in the textbook, uh, we'll just uh, go ahead and do it. We'll just develop the code here. Hope it comes out pretty close to what he has. Uh, I need to move over here a ways. So. Okay, once.
once you get a character streak out here of some kind, you really like having this word of zeros at the end of your character streak. In our string here, instead of having like having to fill in spaces, couldn't you just have ASCII for zero until the value gets overridden? You could. You could initially fill the whole thing with zeros, uh, and then with a 36, you'd, it'd end up printing 0, 0, 0, 0036. That's okay. Uh, you could initially fill all of them with spaces, and then write over them with the numbers you've got, and leave the remaining ones as spaces. A lot of options. Yeah. Okay. You like this? It's semi-standard, but it gives you a good way of knowing when you have finished. Uh, okay, we'll keep using register four. Now, we'll do our traditional little wait loop here. going to have to have our, uh, we're running display here, so uh, zero 04 for the beta FP06 for the data register. We wait by pulling the contents, not of this location, but of this location, which we do with a load indirect. Uh, display status register. You remember, the indirect says, go to this location, use the contents of that location as the address of the operand. the display system is ready, when the contents of this memory location go negative, because bit 15 has a 1 in it, then I can go ahead and print the first character, which is in here. And I do that by saying store, uh, wait, add 4. If that load puts a zero into the thing, I'm going to quit. Uh, shouldn't have to right here at the beginning, but just in case. Okay. I put that character into register 5, so I'm going to store indirect. I didn't leave enough space there. Store indirect register 5. Display data register. That actually prints that first character. 
now I will increment my pointer down here by one. I set this thing up here initially so that I had it here. So my output now is going to look like this. Uh, I have printed that first 20. I did that right here. That gives me a space. I increment register 4. So register 4 now comes down to here. So we're never going to print out, line out that actual location. Yeah, you do. Define what you mean by that. That first location with the 20 in it, not the where the pointer was, was that printed out? Yep. That in this printed right here. Right there. See, right here, the first thing, since register 4 has the address of line out, adding 0 to it, I loaded register 5 from that location. Here I printed it. The LDR. Then I changed it. Okay, that's a. That's not a PC relative, that is a base plus offset. Okay. Never mind. I thought it was a PC relative, so it incremented down to the next one. Oh. Never mind. I got mixed up. Okay, so now then we're going to uh, copy this character now into register 5. So we'll come down, after I change register 4 down to here, here now I load into register 5 this thing, which is another space, and I go back up and wait for the display to be ready. Loop until it's done, then I print it, so now I get my second space, increment register 4, now it's down here. Load register 5, haven't been keeping track actually of register 5, but uh, we load a 2 0 into there and branch back up here and again wait for the display status register. As soon as it goes negative, it's ready. So now I copy this thing out, that gives me another space. Increment register 4. Now down here. Load register 5 from that location. So now I get 3, 3. Positive. So I come back up here and again wait for the display to be ready to accept the next character. As soon as it is, I store register 5 out. That causes a 3 to be printed. Not a 33, remember. That's just a communication thing. That's a signal to the device that you want the character 3 printed. Increment register 4. Moves it down to here. Load register 5, so now we have 0036, and again, wait for the display. What, regarding that waiting, what is it waiting for, just for that character to be printed once yep. it is, it flips yep. the bit? Okay. It takes a little while for the, the system to respond to that. Uh, generally speaking, the wait on the display is shorter than it is on the keyboard. The display works faster than the human being at the keyboard. So typically, it's not a long wait. Okay, we wait, we come out of it, we store this thing out to the display data register, which gives me a 6.
Add one to register four, moves it down to here. And we now load register five from there, and we get zeros. It is neither negative nor positive, it's zero. So it does not take this branch, it comes down here to done. Now what do you want to do when you're done? Typically, one of the things that you want to do is reset the system so that the next printing will be done on the next line. If you don't, uh, the next printing will just continue on on the line where you were. So <clears throat> we do this by uh, again waiting to get the uh, get the display ready. And then I will print uh, a character. Let's see. It's an A, uh, decimal 10, hex A, but I don't think I can do that. down here in my memory. A carriage return. Uh, well, actually it's a line feed is what it is. New line character, uh, our author refers to it as uh, yeah, A is actually line feed, D is a carriage return. Uh, either way, you want to get down to the next line, that's really what you're after. So a line feed goes down and then across, or does it go to just down and sits there? Do you have line to do feed. a carriage return as well? Uh, I'm going to say this about that. See what this system does. Okay. Because uh, traditionally, uh, what happens is that if you do just a line feed, it would just come down to the next line right where it left off, and so you would be indented. And you would have to do a return line feed combination. But... Uh, I haven't tested this code in here, but apparently it says the line feed will get you back to the beginning of the line. Yeah. What is CR again? Is that carriage just return? return? Well, CR stands for carriage return. Uh, but the hex A is actually the ASCII code for a line feed. Uh, D is a carriage return. Uh, again, conceptually, if you just do a carriage return without a line feed, you'll just type back over the same line, which you probably don't want to do. So it sends it to the next line. But line feed, and again, I know on a lot of other systems, if you just do a line feed, it would just take you down to the next line, but you would still be as far into the line as you were. Play with it a little bit and see what happens. You said this was in the book, is it in chapter 8? Uh, part of this, uh, let me uh, bring this up, yeah, it's chapter 8, it's actually on page 208. Thank you. Uh, let me put that up here on the projector. It's not quite the same thing, of course, because uh, it doesn't go all the way through finding the decimal digits and things like that. But uh, let's look at the code. But, uh, is it going to come up? Yep. Mm -hmm. 
takes it a minute to warm up. Uh, what he has actually looked at here is the uh, situation of printing a prompt. But he's got a relatively lengthy prompt message and uh, introduces the uh, assembler directive uh, string Z quote then you have a message quote and what that does is it sets up the whole block of memory here, one location for each character, stores the ASCII code for each character, and then terminates the string with a zero. That's the point of the Z on the end of it. Okay, you see that down uh, here. I just got <laughs> Look, let me zero in on that a little closer here. Okay, here's the prompt string that he's using. Now, this whole routine here is just to input a single character. But one of the things that I want to look at is how you get this prompt message printed out. Because that works no matter what your string actually contains. If it contains a message like this, or a string that you have built to reflect the number that you've been working with. Okay, so uh, he has that. Now, uh, To, uh, go up here to the beginning. Uh, this has not been written actually as a subroutine, but he comes really close. He's preparing you very strongly to do it as a subroutine. Yeah? What's a subroutine? <coughs> Pardon? What's a subroutine? Function? Just a, uh, function. a function. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Uh, the uh, the code is, uh, the assembly acronym is JSR, jump subroutine. Subroutine is the historic name, function is a C name, but uh, subroutine is the more general thing. Uh, first of all, up there at the beginning, you've got these three store <coughs> instructions. The idea there is this, that if this comes out as a function, subroutine, I'm going to be using registers 1, 2, and 3. Maybe the program that called this has data in there that they want left in there. So I have to save those things. Those memory locations are down there at the bottom. Uh, they're just uh, down there, save 1, save 2, save 3. You use block words, you could use a fill, uh, either one. Okay, so that's a setup. Uh, <clears throat> now, he's got a memory location down there that he calls new line. Uh, right here, has that uh, 0, 0, 0, A, the ASCII code for a new line. So, uh, what he's going to do here uh, in printing out this prompt is to begin by getting the thing set to a new line. So here's our wait loop to wait for the display to be ready. As soon as it's ready, he copies register 2, which is our new line character, out to the data register. Okay, so that positions the thing onto a new line. Now, we load the address of our prompt message into register 1, the starting address. We load with offset 0 into register 0. That loads the first character of our prompt message, or our string, whatever it is. This works for printing any string you want. It doesn't matter what the string represents, whether they're characters or digits or 
anything. It works. Uh, if that character that gets loaded is a zero, then we're done. So we skip down to here and start working with the input. Otherwise, we load <coughs> from our status register and wait on the thing. This is our wait loop to make sure that the display is ready for our character. <coughs> the character is in register zero, so we wait for it. As soon as it comes out of the loop, we print the character. We increment our address uh, LA. oh there it was right there we put the address of our prompt into register one so we increment by one to get down to the next character and then do an un the way he's designed it here we do an unconditional branch back to here where we load the next character if it's a zero that's the purpose of that zero word at the end of our character string. If it's a zero, we skip out. Otherwise, again, we wait for the display to be ready. As soon as it is, we print the character, increment, load the next character, so on. Cycle through this thing over and over again until uh, it gets printed out. Okay, that's the same kind of loop that I just did. I wrote mine a little bit differently. There's not a unique way of doing any of these things. Okay, but this whole thing here, this block of code, from here down to here, is to print a, uh, an ASCII character. Zero terminated. It has to be a zero terminated string or the loop won't work. Because it depends on that right here. If you don't have that the word of zeros, it'll just keep working. And it'll take the next location in memory and whatever is in it, uh, it'll interpret it as an ASCII character and print it and keep going. Now, what do you uh, mean by zero terminated? That the last word is a byte of all zeros. The one that you put up? Yeah, that's why I ended mine with a dot fill zero. Now, if you look at what uh, he used this uh, uh, string z command down here. That fills in a memory location for each character in here. Character. And then it has one more word of all zeros. That's the point of this thing. So the row terminated. Now, be aware that is different than the character zero. The character zero has an ASCII code of three zero. This is a word of all zeros. If you look in the ASCII table, that's called a null character. Yeah. Do you have a question? So the, the first slot in, in the array would have an ASCII code for the letter capital I. Right. So if you were to look at that thing, that much of it. If you look at the ASCII codes back here, you'll see here's an uppercase I, hex is a 49. Lowercase n is a 4. That's uppercase. Oh, it's uppercase Oh, I'm not over far enough. Yeah, I was going to say those are too close together. Uh, Six e. There we go. It's a 60. Uh, P is a 7. C 
zero u seven five t is a seven four and here's our space which is a two zero and so on and down here at the very end we get that word of all zeros That's an important part of, uh, there are, it's not the only way to do it, but it's probably the easiest way to terminate your character strings, whether it's a, uh, uh, a string that represents a message of some kind, or if it's a, uh, a string that represents a number you're printing out, either way. Now, there's one other aspect of this program that I want to comment on in the last minute here. And that's this one. I don't know if you've uh, written up uh, the routine to uh, read a number in. Uh, if you have, you'll be aware that uh, you can print out the prompt and you can respond to it by pressing a key and nothing happens on the screen doesn't respond. And you say, did it get it? Click, 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 you know, <laughs> you just keep pressing it. And, uh, yeah. You have to remember that in reality, you've got your screen here, and you've got your keyboard, and you've got the computer over here, and you think these two things are connected, but they're not. <laughs> the connection goes this way. And so when you print something, in order to get it displayed on the screen so that you can see that it is actually connected, you have to go through an echo business. Sounds like a good question for like battle. Of Here's an input routine. Is the keyboard connection? Checks the keyboard status register until it's ready, until you get that ready bit up. Then we load from the data register into register zero. Now immediately, we go and start checking the display status register. And as long as it's positive or zero, we just keep looping. As soon as the ready bit comes out, we copy that character that we just got from here back out to the display to echo it. And then you do your, uh, now, your at multiply by 10 and stuff. There. Yeah. This routine is set up to just input a single character. So it's not the solution to your problem, but it's a big lead into what you need to do. Because uh, ultimately, in reading in an integer, you're now going to want, like you say, go through, multiply what you've already got by 10, get the ASCII code off of this character, add it on, loop back up, and look for the next character. But watch that echo. That's a that's an important part of the thing. I mean, you can function without it, but your user has to have a lot of faith that when they're typing that number in, that it's really going in. <coughs> really do. So to go from ASCII to ASCII. okay, well. Something. Thank you.